There's an XKCD cartoon you might be able to find saying all modern digital infrastructure and there's a picture of some very, very elaborate device, very carefully constructed. But you just notice when you look at it, it's got one little wonky leg and a label saying tiny project maintained by one man in Nebraska since 2002 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the exact words. And this is a story of, of what happens if somebody really very deliberately attacks that wonky leg. This is a story really of a very, very near miss. Where to start? March, late March of this year, somebody looking at their computer connection found it's running a little bit slowly. It was like half a second, that's not much. So most of us might not have even noticed that. But he, oh, that's very weird. I'll dig into it. This is a story of what he found, because it's really quite extraordinary. We need to understand a few things first. So we'll start with, uh, I think probably we should go into a little bit about OpenSSH, what it is and what it does. If you want to connect into a computer, so here's our, our server and here's our client. I'm sitting at home. I want to log into this server, run some code, run some simulation, run some new thing I'm working on. So the server box is going to run an SSH daemon. So SSHD. Uh, this is coming from something called OpenSSH, I believe. I'm not going to do version numbers because I'll definitely get it wrong. I have an absolutely terrible memory. Um, so you as the client, you, you're running SSH, not SSHD. SSHD is the big, we call it a daemon software, the software that, that's responsible for listening. So you, you just run SSH and you connect in. And you're going to need a username and you're going to need a password or some other kind of key. Some kind of identifying device. And if that checks out fine, you can get back in. Uh, you, you let back in and now you can type your commands, you can run it as if you were logged in straight to that computer and the keyboard with whatever permissions. That's great. But modern software ecosystems, they're pretty complicated. So, you know, you build something like this SSHD, you've got to rely on other little bits of software. And that's where this kind of this wonky leg comes in. I'm saying wonky leg, it's not, it's not a bad bit of software. It's, it's a fine bit of software. It's just that it was maintained by just one person. So, so SSHD relies on a lot of different libraries. And actually, technically, it's not directly SSHD. SSHD uses SysD, which uses a compression library. So somewhere in here, there's a little library that's just used to crush things down a bit, make files a bit more compact. So somewhere in here, we have lib, oh, not quite, lib xz. And that was the little project being maintained for years and years by a guy, I think his name's, I'll probably pronounce it wrong, Lasse Colin, I believe. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. He'd been maintaining it. It's just doing compression, but these things require maintenance, they have bugs, and, you know, it's got one main person running it. And it's used in a fair bit of software all across the Linux ecosystem. All right, so what happens? Two and a half years ago, I think, uh, this user Jia Tan shows up. And they, they start to help. Oh yeah, um, yeah, they just, here's a suggestion. Here's something helpful. Now, this person's been running the project for quite a while. Um, yeah, some new, some new blood. That's great. They start to do a few more things. Yeah, useful things, nice things, helping things along. Brilliant. Well, that's great news, right? You know, if somebody came along and said, hey, can I hold your camera? Can I do some? You'd be very grateful. Yeah, OK, welcome aboard. Yeah. Um, and also it turns out, um, you know, he's start, starting to make more contributions, adding little bits of things into the project, building up trust. 
and eventually getting to the state where he's allowed to add things in, he's allowed to push things to the project, he's um, getting to the point of being a co-contributor, and, but also, like, people seem to like him, you know, the, these suggestions he's making, the, people say, oh, yeah, it's a good patch, it's a very good contribution. Oh, we can do with that contribution. Now you have to ask the question, what happens if that, that helpful person isn't quite what they seem? So it turns out what this Jiatan character did was to introduce a back door. SSH is secure, isn't it? Also so SSH, it's got to be secure. That's, it, 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 if it's not secure, you're not having it on the system, right? SSH should play something called Telnet. And if you, if you have an old computer network book, it has Telnet. And whenever I see that on the slide, you've got a big cross to it. Now, don't run this software. Horrendous. So it's just, if, if SSH isn't, isn't secure, it's like having the door of your house open. Burglars welcome. Come in. Take my, take my TV. Mm -hmm. OK, so the way this was done was really ingenious, really ingenious. Software needs tests. It needs uh, some kind of routine to make sure that it's doing the right thing. One of the things that this uh, compression library had was some test files to see if they compress and uncompress right. One of the tests was, well, what if you just feed it junk? Well, it, it should spit an error. Be... Now, one of the tricks here, there were so many tricks because this was really ingenious. One of the tricks here was to take this libxz and hide in. Uh, test file, but this test file, when you expand it out in just the right way, this is suddenly your malevolent code. I'm not going to be able to spell malevolent. This is your payload. Now, there's so much clever going on here because you can't just have submit some code saying, expand my test code into real code. Somebody's going to spot that straight away. I'm not going to pass any kind of code review. So there's all kinds of shenanigans going on here. There's all kinds of regular expressions that don't do quite what they seem, and instead of expanding something, it actually runs a command. But eventually, the test file gets expanded to malevolent code. The malevolent code gets swapped in at runtime to be part of this lib x. Z, and then when I connect from SSH and I include my special secret key. Now, when this gets to SSHD, SSHD is running libxz. And libxz just checks a few things. Am I running on Linux? Is it SSHD we're dealing with today? OK, can I see the special secret key? If you see the special secret key, you look at the special secret key and you look at the payload. Oh, we're out of paper. <laughs> Poor planning. You look at the payload and libxz spots that secret key, extracts the payload and just runs it on the server. Then your SSHD looks at the password and key and says, hmm, it's not the right user, it's not the right password. But you've already run that command on the server before you've got authenticated. So not in SSHD, but in the compression library, just execute whatever command you want on somebody else's server. So what's the special secret key? Where does that come from? Where does that, where does that come from? So Jetan has created a, a security key that will activate the, uh, activate the hidden trap, the hidden backdoor, right? Yeah. The malevolent code they've injected into libxz, it's on the lookout for it. So when it sees some payload coming through, just has a quick look. Is that a special secret key? Yeah, if it's not, fine, carry on. If it is, it's just going to unpack the payload and just run it. Uh, so it's just going to run that payload, whether that is, hey, let's remove all of Sean's files. Ah, let's just, just, just have a look through some directories. Let's, uh, let's send the password file to me. Or let's, whatever we want to do, now we can do that on your computer if you're running SSHD, which many, many, many people are. So yeah, they can run 
whatever command they like on whatever Linux computer they like if it has a search HD going. Let's talk a bit about how far it got, how far this, this got to really being deployed. Because uh, Debian Linux, for whatever reason, names its releases after Toy Story. And they will have a stable release, which is, if you're in production, probably you're going to run stable. A bit out of date, not the latest and greatest. There's testing. It's probably going to be all right. It's OK for most things, but you don't want to run it on your most safe servers. And then they have Unstable. And Unstable is named Sid. And if you remember Toy Story, Sid is the horrible kind of spiky little kid who breaks up your toys. Because if you run Unstable, that's probably it. That's something's going to break. So it only got as far as the earliest bit of the Debian release. I'm not quite sure why it got on the other Linux releases. But the, uh, somebody was running this on Sid, and he discovered this, this fault, this, this slowdown. Um, now, the reason why there was a slowdown was quite interesting. It wasn't just, initially I thought, half a second slowdown. What idiot coder? But it's quite, it's quite a subtle thing. If you have a server that's been on the internet for a long time, people come and rattle your doors. They try your security, right? Can we get in here? Oh, 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 try and log in. So if this SSHD slows down even a little bit, but the server's being hammered pretty hard by all these false attacks, you're going to put on a lot of new CPU load. You are going to put on a lot of slowdown. So probably when they were testing their little hack, um, Probably they hadn't tested it under quite such extreme conditions, so it never showed, never would show up in testing, because they weren't testing on a live server with loads of people hammering away trying to hack in. So they thought it might be seamless, but actually, they, they yeah, they thought, thought it might be seamless. Be. Like, I thought, oh, maybe it's like 0.005 of a second of slowdown, which it would be on kind of a normal server that's not getting loads of login attempts. But I believe it was the fact that there was lots of login attempts that caused the CPU use to spike and the slowdown to occur. But anyway, that, that triggered somebody's alarm bells, got them curious, and uh, I, I should give the name of that person, which is, uh, I believe, Andre, Andre Freund. And again, probably pronounced it wrong. I apologize if they hear this, or to anybody who can pronounce it properly. Um, but yeah, they, we, we owe a lot to them because they were very conscientious. They tracked all of this down. They found the little files. They immediately issued this certification. And it's real real near miss, because this was very subtle. And it's clear they planned more. When you look at what they've done, what they've put in, there's little hooks in the code, there's little hooks they've put in subtly, so that later they can make little tweaks and add in a little more and add in a bit more. So yeah, if you are interested in computer, computer security, I think this is a scary story. And in a way, the follow-up is Jetan, we don't know who or what that is. They had very good OPSEC. They, nobody's been able to trace them. Is Jetan just one really dedicated or curious individual? Is that some kind of state actor disguised as an individual? They've got a lot of dedication. They've run this for two and a half years. They've created quite a few sock puppets to support themselves. So who could they be? We just, we just don't know. Is there another one out there doing something similar to another little wonky leg of the internet? Could be. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, try and sleep soundly. <laughs>Something we need to know about here is what's called time to live. Every internet protocol packet, when it's created, is set up with this flag, time to live. It's as if they've all got a doomsday clock on them. Um, we've got a little counter.